We're in recess from last week. Mr. President, I'm live. I'm not a cat. I'd like to adjourn last week's. I'd like to adjourn last Tuesday's session. Uh, the Senator Goodwin, let us punch in our attendance first, and then okay. we'll, we'll go to you on that motion. You are pretty cat-like. Senator Anderson uh, would like to be recorded as being present. Yeah. Clerk will please lock the machine. There are 36 members present. There is a quorum. I recognize Senator Goodwin. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to adjourn last Tuesday's session. Senator Good Goodwin moves to adjourn last Tuesday's se session. Seconded by uh, Senator McCaffrey, Senator Algier. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Those opposed, nay, the ayes have it. Last Tuesday's session is adjourned. Senator Anderson, your light is lit. Leader McCaffrey. Thank you, Senator. Please unlock the machine for the purpose of recording attendance for today's legislative session. If all members have recorded their attendance, the clerk will lock the machine. There are 36 votes, uh, there are 36 members present. There is a quorum. I ask all members to please rise for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance to be led today by Senator Louis P. De Palmer, representing the city of Newport and the towns of Little Compton, Middletown, and Tiverton. Senator De Palmer. Dear Lord, we pray that you bless this Senate, help us to work with real commitment to solving the problems that face our state. Remind us to always treat each other with dignity and respect. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is the reading of the previous day's journal. Uh, this was the journal on January 26th and not last week. State of Rhode Island Journal of the President. Senator Palmer. Mr. President, I move that the further reading of their journal be dispensed with and their journal be accepted as printed. Senator Palmer requests that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and that the journal be accepted as printed without objection. So ordered. The next order of business is the int introduction of guests, which we don't have. The next order of business is committee reports and or communications. Thank you. We have a communication from Senator Frank H. Cohn III. Dear Mr. President, please be advised that on Thursday, February 10th, 2021, I will be absent from the Senate session. Due to a personal matter, I would appreciate your recording my letter in the appropriate Senate journal. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, Frank H. Chacon III, Senate District Number 7. Please place that on file. Further committee reports and or communications. 
Hearing none, the next order of business is new business. Is there any new business? Consideration, we have Senate Bill Number 113 by Senator Morgan, an act authorizing the Exeter West Greenwich Regional School District to issue not to exceed $17,840,000 in general obligation bonds and notes to finance the renovation, rehabilitation, improvement, furnishing, and equipment of schools and school facilities throughout the district, including but not limited to auditorium and classroom improvements, information technology, roofs, floors, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, electrical systems, playgrounds, athletic facilities, parking and safety improvements, provided that the authorization shall be reduced by the amount of certain grants received from state bond proceeds from the Rhode Island Department of Education or from the Rhode Island School Building Authority. Senator Morgan. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a local issue um, with the resolutions, and I move passage. Senator Morgan moves passage of the resolution. Are there any seconds? Seconded by Lita McCaffrey, Senator Lombardo, Senator Lombardi, uh, Senator Dela Cruz, Senator Rogers, Senator Algier, uh, Senator Oya, Senator DeMario, Senator Bell. Senator Paolino, Senator Archibald, Senator Coyne, Senator Feleg, Senator Anderson. Is there discussion, Senator Goodwin, is there discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, the clerk will please unlock the machine. If all members have cast their vote, the clerk will lock the machine. There are 34 votes in the affirmative, none in the negative, and the resolution passes. Next item is House Bill number 5024, an act authorizing the exit of West Greenwich Regional School District to issue not to exceed $17,840,000 in general obligation bonds and notes to finance the renovation, rehabilitation, improvement, Furnishing and equipping of schools and school facilities throughout the district, including, but not limited to, auditorium and classroom improvements, information technology, roofs, floors, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, electrical systems, playgrounds, athletic facilities, parking and safety improvements, provided that the authorization shall be reduced by the amount of certain grants received from the state bond proceeds from the Rhode Island Department of Education or from the Rhode Island School Building Authority. Senator Morgan. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the duplicate bill, House bill, and I move passage. Senator Morgan moves passage. Is there a second? Second by Senator Algier, Senator McAfee, Senator Archibald, Senator Lombardo, Senator Pearson, Senator Pearson, Senator Rogers, Senator Oya, Senator Mack, Senator Casada, Senator DeMario, Senator Felag, Senator Paolino, Senator Dela Cruz, Senator Rogers, Senator Casada, Senator Coyne. Is there a discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, the clerk will please unlock the machine. If all members have recorded their vote, the clerk will lock the machine. There are 36 votes in the affirmative, none in the negative, and the resolution passes. Our next item is by Senator Cano, a Senate resolution proclaiming the week of February 7th through the 14th of 2021 to be Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week in the state of Rhode Island. Senator Cano. Thank you, Mr. President. Can I have that resolution be read, please? Senator Cano would like the res resolution to be read. The clerk will please do so. Senate resolution proclaiming the week of February 7th through the 14th of 2021 to be Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week in the state of Rhode Island. Whereas the health and well-being of all children throughout our state are of paramount importance to Rhode Island's families and communities, and whereas each year approximately 40,000 babies are born in the United States with a congenital heart defect, beginning their lives with one of more than 40 identified forms of congenital heart defects. 
And whereas nearly one in 100 babies born in the United States are born with a congenital heart defect, and more than 50% of these children will require at least one invasive surgery in their lifetime. And whereas common heart defects include septal defects, patent ductus arteriosus, coarctation of the aorta, tetralogy of the phallate, transposition of the great arteries, and hypoplastic left heart syndrome, as well as many others. And whereas congenital heart defects are among our state's most common birth defects, and they are often fatal due to their seriousness, a lack of effective medical intervention options, and the limited availability of infant donor hearts. And whereas the origins and symptoms of congenital heart defects are becoming more readily identifiable, and the range of surgical options are expanding continuously, thanks to doctors and scientists' diligent research efforts and field experiences that extend our body of knowledge every day. And whereas there is much to learn about the causes of and effective treatments for congenital heart defects, and it's important for parents, pediatricians, and nurses to recognize the warning signs associated with congenital heart defects among newborns so they may provide proper treatment as early as possible. And whereas many of Rhode Island's families and communities are directly or indirectly affected by infant illness and death caused by congenital to heart defects. Now therefore be it resolved that this Senate of the State of Rhode Island uh, hereby proclaims the week of February 7th through the 14th of 2021 to be congenital heart defect awareness week in our state. We furthermore urge all the citizens of the state to join us in the observance of this event and to recognize and applaud the efforts of doctors and scientists everywhere who work diligently to solve life's medical mysteries and to improve the quality of life for us all. And be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be and she is hereby authorized and directed to transmit a duly certified copy of this resolution to Norellis Consuega. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Senator Cano. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. Before I read, um, move the resolution, I would like to make some remarks about this week. Um, as many of you already know, February is Health Month, Heart, Heart, Heart Health Month. And this particular week um, throughout the United States is recognized as Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week. And that is to honor the born with a heart defect and all of the families and friends touched by children with heart defects. This is also the time for recognizing those who care for children and adults born with heart defects, as well as researchers and other health experts. Congenital heart defects affects approximately one in 100 births every year in the United States and are the most common type of birth defect. Heart defects are conditions that, persons, that person live with throughout their lives. An estimated 1 million children and 1.5 million adults in the United States were living with the heart um, defect in 2010. Two local events um, were hosted this week in our um, General Assembly. This resolution is going to be passed today, and yesterday the House also passed a, a resolution such as this one. I have a very good friend of mine that is um, a advocate and has been the person that had made me aware of this week, and her name is Norelis Consuegra. Every year, and this is my third year introducing this resolution, every year we usually have families in the chamber with their children, and um, we introduce them. Well, today I want to thank all the members of the um, Senate that have wear red in their honor of these hard warriors, and I'd like to just um, recognize some of the warriors that are looking at us through the Capitol TV, because I know that this is important for them and their families, and I'm going to name them um, for all of you, so hopefully you will be cheering for them as well as I am. So their names are Tristan Sarmiento, Abigail Bram, Trayvon Robinson, Sophia Hall, Jace Tarbingham, Jacob James Smith, Paul Godden, Abel Wimenier, Corey Janes, Nat Natalie Stover, Kaylee Lindell, Tanner Barnum, Ava Blaze, Tyreen Blaze, Gabriel Richard Santos, Paul Magnus, Lauren Laundry, Austin Vermilia, Dylan Baron, Robert Snyder, Owen McDermott, Nick Zayn, Wayne Coyne, Sam Gaze, Joseph Lopez, Parker Del Sesto, and Caleb Del Sesto. 
I just want to say to the families, thank you so much for all you do for these hard warriors, and we here celebrate you and make sure that every um, Rhode Islander can be aware of this disease and help with uh, passing this resolution. So at this time, I would like to move the passage. Joan Connell moves the resolution. Is there a second? Second by Senator McCaffrey, Senator Goodwin, Senator Algier, Senator Gallo, Senator Lombardo, Senator Anderson, Senator Sosnowski, Senator Mendez, Senator Gallo, Senator DeMario, Senator Acosta, Senator Casada, Senator Pearson, Senator Picard, Senator Lombardi, Senator Coleman, Senator Lawson, Senator Valverde, Senator Coyne, Senator Seventy, Senator Murray, Senator De Palma, Senator Golden, Senator Oyer, Senator Bell, Senator Rogers, Senator De La Cruz, Senator Paolino, Senator Morgan, Senator Burke, Senator Archibald, Senator Corkin, Senator Anderson, Senator Miller, Senator Gallo, Senator Coleman, Senator Casada, and Senator Mack again, and Senator Rogers. Senator Felag. Discussion on the resolution. Senator Costa. Thank you, Mr. President. And I want to thank my colleague, Senator Cano, for submitting this. I received a similar email um, from Ms. Norelis Consegura. And in my response, I told her that my eyes swelled with tears as I read her words. Because when I did, I was immediately transported to November 10th, 1999. That was the day that as a kid, my mom and I hopped in her beat up two door Honda Accord with no AC where you switch your ass off anytime you went anywhere in Miami-Dade County. And we drove to Jackson Memorial Hospital, the public research hospital in the city where I lived at the time to have life-saving heart surgery. The fear that a kid experiences as they go through something like this is indescribable. That day, I was fortunate enough that 10 days prior, I had been approved for public subsidized health insurance called Florida Healthy Kids for poor kids like me. And so my life-saving heart surgery cost $100. And I'm able to stand before you today because of the doctors, the nurses, the hospital clerical staff, and the, the bureaucracy that made sure that I was able to get covered. And just four years later, I would watch as my cousin, Isaac Upeggy, who lives right here in Rhode Island, born in North Providence, born and raised, would have open heart surgery to save him. And so the CHD thing is personal for my family, but I think it's important that we recognize the heart warriors for their path, the families who support them, who go through indescribable pain to show courage in the face of death and who try not to cry because that's the hardest thing, watching my uncle not cry, watching my mother and father not cry as they, we were wheeled in, not knowing if we'd make it out on the other side. And so I thank my colleagues here who are wearing red and, and supporting these heart warriors. I thank Norelis for her endless advocacy. And I remind us that had we been born in a different time, in a different nation state, or of a different immigrant or legal classification status, not all of us would be as lucky. I might not be here today. And so it's important that we continue to support their advocacy, continue to support research into our, our institutions and our public hospitals. Mm -hmm. And I thank you all and encourage the passing of this resolution. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Senator Costa. Further discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, those in favor of the resolution, please indicate by saying aye. Those opposed, aye. nay. The ayes have it. The resolution passes. The next item is by Senator Lawson, a Senate resolution expressing deepest condolences on the passing of the Honorable James P. McStay. Senator Lawson. May I have that Senator Lawson requests that the resolution be read. The clerk will please do so. Senate resolution expressing deepest condolences on the passing of the Honorable James P. McStay. Whereas the Honorable James McStay of Bristol, formerly of East Providence, passed away on January 19th, 2021, he was the beloved husband of Cheryl McStay for 47 years. And whereas James McStay was born in Providence, a son of the late Hugh and Beatrice McStay, he graduated from East Providence High School in 1963 and the New England Institute of Anatomy in 1967. He was a licensed funeral director and the owner and operator of Perry McStay Funeral Home in East Providence, where he was well known and admired for his integrity, professionalism, 
and his immense compassion for those who lost loved ones. And whereas the Honorable James McStay was elected in 1984 to represent District 43 in the Rhode Island State Senate. For 12 years, from 1984 to 1996, he served his constituents and the state of Rhode Island with honor and tireless passion. Senator McStay was deeply respected by his Senate peers and was chosen by his colleagues to serve as the first Deputy Majority Leader. He was also a member of the Senate Judiciary and Health, Education, and Welfare Committees. And whereas Mr. McStay was a member of the Rhode Island Funeral Directors Association, the National Funeral Directors Association, East Providence Council 1528, and the Knights of Columbus. He was also a devoted fan of the New York Yankees and the Providence College Friars, and was passionate about sailing and spent many hours on his beloved sailboat, just at water. And whereas in addition to his wife, the Honorable James McStay leaves behind his children, Michelle Doyle, Patrick McStay and his wife, Caitlin, Marissa Volakovich and her husband, Randy. He also leaves behind eight grandchildren, Tyler, Riley, Natalie, Emmy, Colin, William, Drew, and Nora, and his siblings, Marianne Plant, Rosalie Watton, William McStay, Peter McStay, and the late Richard McStay, and Patricia Tremonti. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Senate of the State of Rhode Island hereby expresses its deepest condolences to the McStay family on the passing of the Honorable James McStay. And be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be, and she is hereby authorized and directed to transmit a duly certified copy of this resolution to Cheryl McStay and family. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Senator Lawson. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to recognize the Senator's service to our community, as well as his service to the community at some of the most difficult times in their life when he received people at uh, his funeral home. I know personally uh, that's been the case in my family. So um, I'd like to extend my deepest sympathies to his family and I move the passage of the resolution. Senator Lawson moves passage of the resolution. Is there a second? Second by Sen Senator Mendes, uh, Senator Gallo. Senator Lombardo, Senator McCaffrey, Senator Anderson, Senator Felix, Senator DeMario, Senator Costa, Senator Pearson, Senator Lombardi, Senator Mack, Senator Algier, Senator Burke, Senator Archibald, Senator Dela Cruz, Senator Rogers, Senator Bell, Senator Corkin, Senator Connell, Senator Coyne, Senator Seventy, Senator De Palma, Senator Murray, Senator Oyer, Senator Morgan, Senator Rogers, Senator Goodwin, Senator Coyne, Senator Casada, Senator Sosnowski, Senator Mack, Is there discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, are those in favor of the resolution, please indicate by rising. Resolution passes. That brings us to our Senate consent calendar. Senator McCaffrey moves the consent calendar. Second by Senator Algier. The clerk will please unlock the machine. Have all members recorded their vote? Clerk will lock the machine. There were 36 members in favor, none opposed. The consent calendar is adopted. <laughs>